Hello everybody, welcome to my Wheel Recovery series where I just go through some of the things that I've learned on my journey to anorexia recovery. Um, today's brief chat is going to be about butter. Um, hopefully, all of you out there, you'll be all fortunate enough like I was to have the support for some really superb, excellent, professional, knowledgeable dietitians that will go into the absolute mechanics and the reasons why fats are so super important to our diet. Um, but if you're in it like me, it will be something that will, will be terrifying you. If you're at the beginnings of your recovery journey, I know fats tends to be that, that one thing that keeps coming back, comes back, fats and carbs, I'll do carbs at some point, um, that keeps, it keeps coming back to us and being something that we're, we're very, very afraid of and we vilify, you know, the poor, poor defensive little fat um, ends up being something that we all hate and we all try and avoid. Um, they are super important from a health point of view, but the other thing that I think is really important that we forget about when we're in anorexia is that well, in anorexia we calculate the life out of life. Um, anorexia and orthorexia, we, we calculate everything. Everything is to the absolute minute detail. And what we forget to do is actually start to remember that life's for living and life's supposed to be for passion and for enjoyment and for taste. And the thing about butter is that it makes life and it makes things taste better. Yes, it's super important for us physically, but actually, what is better than hot jacket potato with butter? What is better than hot buttery toast with beans or scrambled egg? Or I just had two slices of hot buttery toast dumped into my tomato soup. Um, I've met a lot of people who along the journey have said, oh, but I don't like butter. Um, I find that really hard to believe. I'm sorry if you're someone who I've come across that said that. I appreciate that we have people have intolerances and what have you, but actually, I just think a lot of that is anorexia speaking. Now, I appreciate, no, I'm, I'm not a vegan, I'm not vegetarian. This is just proper bog standard butter that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, and I appreciate people's choices, but there are, there are varieties out there that we just need to embrace. And we have to remind ourselves that life tastes better with butter. Bread, dry bread, taste of nothing it's pointless but put butter on it and suddenly it becomes that you can start to enjoy and that's another rewiring it's another smack in the face to anorexia to say look you are not going to control what i can and can't have and more importantly you're not going to control what i do and don't love and enjoy i love butter i'm so pleased i've got it back in my life um so the journey now went on so these this series is about the gradual phased exposure to certain things so the journey i went on with butter when I was in a pretend recovery, or bullshit recovery as I like to call it, um, I told myself, more importantly I should say, anorexia told me, that I was dealing with spreads very, very well because I would go and buy uh, lighter than light, 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 floralite, um, and I would weigh it out and then I would spread it evenly on a piece, probably a piece of like, you know, the Danish bullshit bread or little tiny, tiny kids bread. But as far as anorexia was concerned, she was telling me that that's fine, I'm doing what should be doing in recovery because just a few weeks ago I was having none at all. And some people say, yeah, that's better. And I suppose, yeah, it is better. But every single thing about that is controlled still by anorexia. She was controlling what type of spread I was going to have, how much I was going to have, when I was going to have it, and the fact that I wasn't going to really enjoy it because that lighter than light light stuff tastes like plastic. So when I fully committed to recovery in January 2019 on the journey that I call my real recovery, um, butter was one of the first things that I did. And I did real, real butter. Okay, here's two packs of real butter. Now, the reason why real butter suddenly started to open up lots of things for me was quite an interesting one because the beauty of real butter, as opposed to anything that's particularly branded, so say you like um, Flora or Lurpak or... Um, clover um you can go around forever trying to find that one particular brand so you can convince yourself as you're going in shop to shop that you're trying to buy this stuff but they don't sell the one i want so i'll just go home without it no 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 your anorexia is dictating which brands you can have pretending that it's because you prefer it but actually what i found it was just another way to make sure that i wouldn't buy something because nine times out of ten my corner shop wouldn't have flora light light lighter than light but every shop every corner shop every garage every supermarket every bargain magnet store stocks butter 
proper butter. So the first thing in this, the first stage in this, number one, was to ignore and pretend that margarines and spreads and any light option didn't exist. They just didn't exist. They were not allowed in my fridge and in my home. They were a part of other people's lives, but not my life. Number two was that I told myself and told everybody else that I was going to start eating proper butter. Um, the beauty of proper butter is that, yes, I just said it's in any single shop you go to, but it always seems to be in a gold similar packet. So this is butter from two different shops. This is Tesco and this is Spa. All right, now, when you're in an anorexic spin and you're in a shop and a supermarket and anorexia is absolutely screaming to you, but the recovery voice in your head is telling you, you must buy butter, you must buy butter. All you're looking for is a gold packet. You then don't need to spend ages scrutinising all of those shelves in the fridge area. You're just looking for a gold packet. So you can run it, you can grab your gold packet and off you go. You've got it, it's in your bag. Okay? And I actually then, however, will tell you, oh yes, but you can't possibly use that straight away, can you? It's too hard. Rubbish. Few, two things have been invented recently. Number one, you can't see, I'm pointing, the microwave, all right? So feel free to cut chunks off and put it in the microwave. Or, and this is the even better, best bit, invest in a butter dish, all right? Yeah. Don't judge me, look, covered in crumbs. You tell me we've all had our breakfast this morning. Butter dish. So what happens is, grabbed and gone with your gold packet because you know it's butter but you don't want to read the labels and you don't want to be confronted by this so to make it even better as soon as you get home you unwrap it and you put it in it's a little friendly pot that then in my house lives either on the window so that you just see or over here near the uh, near the oil and near the toaster and then also it's less hard so you can just use it perfect for toast Bread, you might sometimes need to still shove it in the microwave, but absolutely perfect for toast. It melts beautifully on it. Okay, so that sounds quite simple, but actually it really is. The trick then, though, is obviously once it's in the tin, in the butter dish, you have to use it. So you need to make a pact with yourself that every single time you have certain things. So I chose um, every single time I was to have bread and every single time I was to have potatoes. Those were my two. I would make sure that they had butter on them or in them. So if it was mashed potato, it had to have butter in it. If it was boiled potato, I had to put butter on it. If it was a baked potato, I had to put butter in the jacket potato. Um, toast, butter, sandwiches, butter. Sandwiches are so much nicer with butter in them. Um, and that was my pact. So first thing was to ignore all low fat, non proper butter items. Second thing was to buy butter just because it really simply comes in gold packets and it stopped my spin in the supermarket. Third thing, because I had an issue with labels and numbers, and unfortunately, we are in anorexia recovery in a time when the world's gone label mad. I needed to stop myself being confronted by these at the start. So I'd unpack them and put them in a butter dish, so it was ready and waiting to be used whenever I wanted it to. Um, I'm not going to go into portioning and amounts of butter, because that's that's a totally different kettle of fish portioning, which I will I will do because that's going to have to be in stages quite a longer video. Um, I suppose the rule of thumb, though, if anyone was really really bothered, is if I was going for it for a, a sandwich or a piece of toast, I'd probably start off with something like that, and then go from there really. Um, but that would be for bread. That, for for jacket potatoes, it would be more than that. But that's basically it. All right. So again, to recap, ignore any of the low fat rubbish. Just tell yourself, you're rewiring, remember? Tell yourself you are not going to have it. Buy proper butter, just because it comes in a really easy gold packet, you can grab and go when you're in an anorexic spin. Transfer it to a butter dish to get rid of any labels and then tell yourself and your family and everybody else that from that point forward, all you're gonna be doing is using butter and choose two things to start off with. Bread, stroke toast, and potatoes were my two. Okay, happy spreading everybody. See you soon. Bye.